So my name is Sarah and I'm a Child Life Specialist at Children's Hospital of Boston and that means that I run the playroom and I just help kids feel comfortable when they're at the hospital. Hi, my name is Kendall and I'm the Oncology Community Outreach Nurse here at Children's Hospital. And what I do is I go out and I see patients when they first go home from the hospital after they found out that they have cancer. And Sarah and I also do the school visits together. The back to school program was made for your class and for your teachers to help them understand where your friend has been who's missed a lot of school. We hope to educate you about what cancer is and what kind of medicine you need to take when you have cancer and some of the really hard things about having cancer. And we also want to help your friend feel more comfortable coming back to school. We hope to answer some of the questions you might have been thinking about, but the most important thing we want you to know is that your friend is still your friend, even though they've been sick and they've been in the hospital. They're still the same kid that you used to play with. Some of you might be wondering how your classmate got cancer. The thing is, we really don't know how kids get cancer, but what we do know is that it's really, really, really rare, and most kids don't get cancer. What we do know about cancer is that you can't catch it from your friends. You can't catch it from hugging or drinking out of the same glass. Cancer is not contagious. So kids who have cancer have to take a special medicine called chemotherapy. And chemotherapy works so well to get rid of all the cancer cells, but it does cause some really yucky things to happen. And one of those things is that they lose their hair. So that means that your friend who's coming back to school isn't going to have any hair. But an important thing to remember is that when your friend is all done taking their medicine and their chemotherapy for cancer, their hair will grow back. Kids who receive chemotherapy get their medicine through a portacath. And a portacath is a tiny tube that's put into a vein. So veins, you can see, are on the back of your hands. They're little blue lines. And the job of veins are to carry blood and other fluids all throughout the body. And did you know that we have a really big vein in our chest? And that's where the portacath is put in. You might be wondering how kids get their portacath. The doctors give them some special medicine to help them fall asleep. And while they're asleep, they put the tube in. When they wake up, it may feel a little sore, but after a while, it feels okay, and it's a great way for kids to get their medicine. When your classmate comes back to school, you won't even know they have a portacath. Just be careful and gentle when you're playing with them. Some of the other things that chemotherapy might do is make your friend feel really weak or tired, and sometimes they might feel sick to their stomach. But for the most part, they're gonna feel okay, and they really wanna be back at school with all of you. The Jimmy Fund Clinic is an outpatient clinic for kids that have cancer. Your classmate probably has to go there once a week to have a doctor's checkup and maybe to get some chemotherapy. But the nice thing about the Jimmy Fund Clinic is that they only go for a checkup. They don't have to stay overnight. When your classmate is receiving treatment over at the Jimmy Fund Clinic, there's lots of fun things to do while they're there. There's a big playroom, which is a big boat with a slide. They have lots of activities, arts and crafts, and a Wii system so that you can play video games while you're there. There's also a resource room where you can do some reading, and there are lots of computers. There's also an area in the Jimmy Fund Clinic for the teenagers. It's a special area for them just to do some things that they like to do while they're there. So your classmate may or may not, as a part of their treatment, have to get radiation. If they have to have radiation therapy, they have to go over to the hospital next door called Brigham and Women's Hospital. It connects to children, so they just have to go right across through a tunnel, and they can stay indoors. And they go into a special room. Where there are lots of big machines. The important thing is your classmate, all they have to do is lie down on the table and they just have to lay still for about 10 or 15 minutes. And the big machines move all around them and the radiation goes where it needs to go. Although the Brigham is an adult hospital, there's a special place in the radiation department for kids. They have games and toys and activities and there's even a child life specialist there to play with you too. When your classmate comes back to school, they might feel really tired sometimes from having their chemotherapy. They might need to rest and they might miss school here and there. They might come in for just a half a day, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the different places in the hospital. First, there's something called inpatient rooms. And that's just the room that kids stay in while they're at the hospital. There's a bed in there and there's a TV and even a video game system. And there's also a bed for mom and dads to sleep so they can stay overnight with their kids too. 
the playroom is a place where kids can go to have fun. There's books and games and toys and arts and crafts. So it's just a nice place for kids to go so they can leave their room for a little while. The nurse's station is a place where nurses go to do some of their work, sometimes on a computer, sometimes they're writing down notes, and there's also someone there who answers phones and helps to guide people if they feel lost. The resource room is another place in the hospital where kids can go. It's full of computers and books and games, and they even have a Wii system there for kids to play with. The hospital has a place called the Prouty Garden, and when it's warm outside, kids like to go out there and play. There's beautiful trees and flowers, and sometimes kids will even eat lunch out there when it's nice. We have special clowns that come and visit the kids at the hospital. They are really silly and they really try hard to make the kids laugh. And sometimes they make the parents laugh too. Music therapists also come to visit the kids at the hospital. They're kind of like music teachers. Sometimes they bring a group of kids together and they all play music together or they sing together. And sometimes a the music therapist can even help teach kids how to play instruments. Another special program we have at the hospital is called the Pet Therapy Program. And this is a program where dogs come to visit kids in the hospital. Because a lot of the times kids have dogs at home and they can't see them while they're in the hospital. These dogs are specially trained to come visit kids in the hospital. They're so gentle and kids are able to pet them and talk to them and spend time with them. One of the ways you can help your friend when they come back to school is to remember to wash your hands after you sneeze or cough or use the bathroom. It's really important to wash your hands to get rid of all of those germs. I think the most important thing for you all to know is that your classmate is still your classmate and they're still your friend. And even though they might look a little bit different right now while they're receiving their treatment, they're the same person and they want to be treated the same way. So thank you so much for watching this video. But please remember that your classmate is still your friend, that cancer isn't contagious and you can't catch it, and that cancer is very, very rare in children and most kids don't get it. But also please remember that we talked about a lot of things today. If you have some questions, please feel free to ask your school nurse or your school teacher. Thank you.